Hudson is a 23-year-old guard at the upcoming Fazbear Frights the Horror attraction. His life up to this point has been filled with tragedy. His father committed suicide, and his mother remarried a man called Lewis, who would physically abuse Hudson at nearly every chance he got, which caused Hudson to fail his classes. His mother was constantly taking pills to sleep, which caused Hudson to be malnourished. He became a target for bullies, who would hold his head down at the flushing toilet. The teachers constantly yelled at him for, for falling behind, with the worst being Mr. Atkin, who called him stupid. At the end of his senior year, Hudson's family's house burned down, killing Lewis and his mother. However, this only made things worse, as Hudson became the prime suspect. He was unable to keep a steady job, but eventually his two childhood friends, Barry and Duan, convinced him to apply to Fazbear's Fright temporarily before all three joined the Navy. However, due to Hudson's physical abuse, along with the nerve damage caused by Lewis in his legs, it caused him to fail the physical test. So instead, Hudson decides to settle at working at the attraction full time. He meets a girl called Faith, who admits to liking Hudson. However, she dumps him. She breaks up with him after being told about the fire. This severely meant affects Hudson's mental health, as it causes all of his trauma to come back. One day, his crew is informed that something big was found, and it's arriving the next day. Hudson visits his grandmother, Granny Foster, for advice, and she tells him, tells him to leave his job. However, when he refuses, she responds with, Your path is your own. Hudson arrives the next day, just in time to see Barry and Duan carrying a coffin-sized crate into the building. Duan explains that whatever is inside was found in a hidden room, hidden room in, one, in one of the pizzerias. And while Barry goes to get a crowbar, Hudson snaps at Hudson for being afraid of the animatronic parts. Hudson storms off, missing the crate being opened. Duan explains that it was an old animatronic, and Hudson watches his friend to hook it to a wall. But he squints to its eyes, so all he sees is the white eyes and green eyelids. That night... Hudson decides to face his fears and approach the new, the new animatronic. He runs straight up to the lobby, but stops dead in his tracks upon looking into the animatronic. It's a greenish-yellow rabbit with torn pieces exposing its endo and reddish material. That is Springtrap. Hudson touches the reddish material and learns that it is a tissue, but then he hears the voice of Mr. Atkin. He angrily attacks the animatronic and tries to move it, but he gives up and continues to do his nightly sleep of, sleep of the building, only to discover the, st the statues in the hiding room possibly singing. Something knocks the, the, the nightstick out of Hudson's hand and he hallucinates being slammed into the desk by Lewis in his childhood bedroom, only to realize uh, he had slammed his head to an arcade machine and runs back to his office to, ban to bandage his head. Once there, he finds that Springtrap is missing. Hudson grabs a hammer and runs to the bathroom to wash the blood off his hands. However, he suddenly hallucinates bullies dragging him to a toilet and submerging his head. He snaps out of it and discovers that the toilet is dry. Hudson hears laughter and looks up to see Springtrap looking out of the, poking his head out of a vent before retreating. Springtrap, he jumps into the vents and chases after him, finding the severed heads of several animatronics along the way. One is a damaged chica, head attached to a shoulder, an arm, and a hand. Hudson finally gives up and crawls towards the nearest exit, but the chica head grabs his foot. He tries kicking her off, but he hears Faith's voice repeating, I like you. Chica grabs his hand, but Hudson manages to exit the vent. Slams her, her into a pile of animatronics and costume parts which tear her into shreds. Bits. Hudson runs into the kitchen, grabbing a butcher knife and rolling pin, then goes back to the office. He realizes it is that he can't just leave the building, but finds his keys missing. A large pile of animatronic and costume mouths of animatronic break through a vent in the ceiling, asking Hudson algebra problems and calling him stupid in Mr. Atkins' voice. They crawl onto his body, and even 
Ted attempting to enter his mouth. But before they can, they can, Hudson wets his pants and curls up into a ball and cries. He eventually stops and, he, and the mouths are gone. But he goes to, the, to get cleaned up when something grabs his wrist and, and wings him, breaking his wrist. He hallucinates a time where Lewis had done the same thing to him as punishment for peeing his pants. Hudson snaps back and sees his knife a few feet away from him, but also that all the animatronic parts on the wall are moving. The closest to him are three arms, one holding his nightstick, another holding his hammer, and an unmoving foxy arm in the middle. Hi. Hudson gets into a sitting position, but then Foxy's hook finally moves and cuts his back. He looks at his watch and discovers that, it, that his shift ends in four hours. Springtrap appears, slowly moving down the hall towards Hi. Hudson and speaking with Lewis's voice, taunting him, just like the real Lewis did long ago. Hudson threatens to use his knife, but Springtrap overpowers him and stabs Hudson in the bicep. Hudson runs away, Hello. getting bitten in his right wall, fore forearm by one, of the, by one of the mouse on the wall. But when he looks back, Springtrap is gone, with only a butcher knife uh, lying on the ground. Hudson's right hand is spattered with blood, implying he had accidentally stabbed his own arm instead of Springtrap. Hudson heads towards the exit to the gift shop to cover the wounds. When he passes Pirate's Cove, the curtains tear and tear and Springtrap pokes his head out, waving Foxy's arm. Hudson runs, but Springtrap doesn't chase after him. When he reaches the lobby, he discovers Springtrap hooked up to the wall exactly how Barry and Duan had left him. Hudson brushes, off, brushes it off and reaches the gift shop, where he warps a large amount of to towels around him to break the glass on his arm. He looks for something to break the glass door, but he sees movement and backs out. He smells Lewis's tobacco and hallucinates a time where Lewis punished Hudson for puking by trapping him in his room using his toys. He snaps back into only to be thrown across the lobby, breaking his back, and he spots a vent with his cower swinging. <laughs> Hudson returns to the yeah, gift shop only to find the plushies and action figures guarding the exit. Hudson's pain is beginning to be too much to bear, and he, and he decides to hide. Remembering what Granny Foster had always told him, heat purges, fire heals. He makes his way to the kitchen and hides in an oven. He thinks that to, back to the time when, when he wrestled a knife from Lewis and threatened to tell everyone everything he, if he ever touched him again. Lewis basted boasted that they wouldn't believe him and Hudson crawled into the fireplace to hide. He realized he took Lewis's lighter and lit the curtains, which spread to the entire house. Hudson barely made it out, but the burns on his legs gave him more nerve damage. He hears cracks from within the oven and discovers that it's been turned on. Hudson tries kicking at the do open door, but it doesn't budge, and he begins to hear Granny Foster calling his name. He asks for her to help, but realizes her voice is coming from inside the oven. Hudson begs for help, but she only says, Your path is your path. Hudson is cremated alive. Barry and Duan return the next day, shocked to find the door still locked. When they unlock it, they smell something burned and attempt to find Hudson. They come across Springtrap in the exact same condition that when they left him. And when they check the office, they discover it empty. Barry notes that the smell is coming from the kitchen and they approach it, with Barry announcing his sympathy for Hudson. <laughs>